Uh, hello guys, this is Damodoc82. We are here with uh, some friends in chat with us today. Uh, we have I am Mark 3. Uh, we have Matey. Hello. Uh, we also have Lil Kari. They're here for this uh, FTD craft review. And uh, today we are going to be looking at a design by Ivan the Space Gropnik. And it is the right hand. At least I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. From the spelling, I think you are. It almost kind of gives me like maybe a super dreadnought kind of feel to it. What do you guys think? It does kind of look yeah. like it's from around that era, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it certainly does. He's got a very, very interesting gun layout here that I'm actually kind of liking. You mean the oh, massive yeah. amount of secondaries? Yes. Uh, I'm a big fan of spamming DACA. I uh, should any good FTD player. I'll say one thing. This ship definitely feels American. Yeah, I don't, yeah. Uh, I'd almost price on this the USS Second Amendment Heights. <laughs> um, and before we started recording, Damo was saying it looked French. Uh, mostly, I was saying that because the way that the um, the funnel was done here, uh, that's something that I have seen in several French designs. That's where I was getting that from. I'm loving the detail work on the masts. Oh yeah, it looks great. Hmm. It's sort of a combination of a French bridge with, well, a USS Texas style bridge. Mm -hmm. So and let me just, oh, I'm oh, sorry, go ahead, Mini. And the secondaries, they look very French. The mm -hmm. side ones, the, what are they? 118mm ones? Yeah. So maybe it's kind of a hybrid of a uh, French and American. Anyway, um, the uh, the description that Ivan has given us, um, the description of the craft is 4x triple 500 millimeter turrets that fire hollow point Sabo and APHE. I'm imagining he's uh, probably got one turret to fire one thing and another turret to fire another. That's that's actually stuff that I've done on other designs myself. Works pretty good. Uh, there are 466 millimeter anti-aircraft guns firing a uh, flak frag, and uh, then there's 10 of the 118 millimeter anti-aircraft guns firing what looks like flak frag again. Uh, then there's 200 millimeter kinetic seawas and a lamb system. Uh, he classifies this as a battleship, and uh, he says it. Its preferred you know, target type is other surface vessels of similar price and range. So he also says that if we're going to have it fight anything, try to get at least one kilometer away. I was looking and it's um, the main guns are actually uh, super cavitation bases as well. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, since super cav works very, very well with kinetic, I wouldn't be surprised by that. Hmm. Yeah, this thing could, I have um... something to say about that once we get to review Wing the Guns as the resident gun maker. Go ahead and say it now, oh Mr. Experienced One. Because well, um, th this is basically, the way we do this, uh, since you don't seem quite so familiar, is basically we, we talk about things as we get to them. So Yes, we are looking for honest reactions. That's the reason why we chose to do it this way. Yeah, so if you want to react to the guns immediately, go right ahead. So... Looking at the guns, the APS seems decent, although, well, since he's meant to be fighting at longer ranges, I'm kind of concerned with the recoil absorption. It's not an, it's simply not enough. Are these, like, rail-assisted or pure yeah, rails? Yeah, these or? are rail-assisted guns and it doesn't even have half of what it's supposed to, which will bring the accuracy down by half. Or more. Additionally, just as a small tip, because not many of you may know this, if you look into the shells, he could have added another gunpowder casing. Um, may I step in really 6. quick? Um, 
You're talking about the lack of recoil reduction? That seems to be a problem for the center barrel only. The side barrels both have much more recoil absorption. So just a mainly a tetrising issue, you think? Because I could totally see that. Seems yeah, to be, it's yeah. A it's a tetris issue if you take a look at it. The guns aren't properly balanced, and that's what seems to be causing it. Mainly Triple barrel is hard to balance, in all fairness. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. I've tried to make triple barrel guns before. Or, not option two, and something I think may have happened here. If this was submitted a while ago, there may have been changes to the APS. Especially you make a good point, actually. Actually, yeah, I've noticed especially if you else. take a look at the four and five way coolers. Although, something tells me this isn't the case because the 2000 per second. <laughs> Rail charge is the same on all the guns. Um, I would like to note that um, actually it seems to be the center gun is less accurate, but it does fire faster. Or it could fire well, that's faster. That's interesting. Yeah, that's interesting. Actually, no, yeah. wait, wait, I'm looking. The, the, it's got a different bottleneck on it, it looks like. So. Massive texturing problems, it seems. Yeah. Additionally, if you, I'll note some. So I'll note something about the shell types. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you take a look at either the arm pierce, piercing or hollow point. Yeah, it looked like he went with a A P H E and a um, the hollow point the armor piercing for the main guns. From what I was looking at there. Uh, super cavitation on both of those. I don't know if I would have done that for the APHE. I probably would have just done it for the hollow point. But I'm sorry, I go think. ahead and continue there. So, that's the first thing. He's reducing his payload to 75% for the high explosives. So, that's one thing I wouldn't do, instead of just having the emergency ejection defuse. Well, I can understand why he you know, would... Uh, want that because uh, something that should be noted is a lot of the more juicier parts of a ship are usually below the waterline so I can understand the reasoning for wanting to do that yeah I, I can as well although setting up two different AIs could work mm -hmm. but what I'll note is that if you manage to add a single gunpowder casing to this and just reduce the flip, propellant flip. mount you could increase the speed and still fit into the sh shell type. Mm -hmm. You could even try this now in the actual customizer with one of them and you'll see how the size of the shell changes based on the amount of gunpowder. It's proportional. Hmm. So that's a little bit of a heads up and it's great for maximum guns. If you have a 700mm projectile in a 500 millimeter shell, well, you can still put it in gunpowder, very definitely. So, a couple other things that I have been noticing about this, uh, he has very, very small fuel engines on the front and back. Um, I'm assuming that could very well be for his lambs. I haven't really seen any shielding or anything like that. Have you guys? Uh, he does have some shielding. Actually, uh, I'm imagining that's probably around some more of the key parts of the ship because I haven't really found any. All along the sides, actually. Okay. Like. Oh, th I have been able to see it because this huge wall of uh, <laughs> a pleat here. <laughs> yeah, okay. b b both sides aligned with the uh, shield projectors. Okay. Uh, let's see what kind of settings he's got. He went with strength seven. Uh, decent average. Angles, um, fairly short range, but really big. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this whole craft seems to just scream power efficiency at me. Mm, seems to be. If you take a look at, it's got decently it's got lots of steam turbines. I've noticed, and a huge battery bank here in the back. Seems like he's got his lamps pretty well protected. Yep. Although, one thing I'll note is that it's only got single turbo engines. 
but backup engines are a good thing and I definitely give, will give him prop up, prop ups for that. Although next time, if you're going to use the 5x5 space, just hook up more turbos to the cylinders and you'll see a jump, basically 50% jump in efficiency. Um, Help. Go ahead, Ian. Sorry, I was, I was just going to note, um, it seems that um, this was also built before you could use the crank motors to power, power steam propellers. So that's a potential upgrade right there. It would let him take out the um, steam props and the actual pistons that he's got back here. It looks like he's actually done a bit of a combination of both here if you come all the way to the after the ship. Oh, now. yeah. But Never mind. My, my concern my for I... the... Uh, doesn't increasing the length of the shaft reduce some of the efficiency because it it's having to turn so much equipment? It um, it makes it take longer to spin up and ramp down, and also greatly increases the area that could be damaged and break it. Mm -hmm. But it also increases the amount of raw energy the engine can generate as well. Okay. Or, or rather, the amount of energy it can a... save. Yeah, I was just concerned that uh, having shafts this long could be a potential issue. It seems to be uh, like a, a build thing, like you didn't want the pistons at the back for that steam engine. Yeah, uh, he probably did that to probably uh, give himself a little bit better protection you know, for the steam engine portion, I'm imagining. It just, I usually try to uh, put the steam engine in the back of mine just so that the length of the shaft stays pretty short, but... I'm sure he's got his reasoning for that. Um, I think it's because if the shaft of the propellers does get severed, the gearboxes could still be used to drive the shields. And it's both. Mm -hmm. One yeah. of the things I'll note is that this is how it was done in old battleships. Just the engine was still in the middle and the shafts went under the main turrets. Yeah, to well, better protect it. My biggest thing is the more moving parts that you have in something, the more likely something's going to break. And that's that's kind of my thoughts on this. But um, well, um, if I recall, it was one to better protect it because the middle of the ship is generally the best armored, best defended area. Mm -hmm. And two, okay, so they'll it's, usually go yes. And two, it was a distribution thing because engines tend to be really, really heavy. Yeah, it was both. Uh, and one of the things was you could fit it with more armor mm -hmm. in the middle of the ship, which very definitely seems to be a thing here. Just the sheer quantity. Yeah, I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with it. It's just a mostly personal preference for me. I get that, and I definitely agree. I mean, I'm not trying to tell anyone to not build a steam engine this way. I'm just saying it's not what I would do, if that makes sense. Uh, I'm going to tell you exactly what you have to do, people watching. And that is, do not do what the ship does. Zero out of ten would not play with, because no small <laughs> missiles. I, I must, I must uh, maintain I must maintain the running joke at this point. Yes, yes. Uh, <laughs> now that you're mentioning it, I don't think I've seen like any missile systems in this... No, that, I'm not either. It seems to be entirely APS-based. The interceptors that I have seen are on the bottom, and it looks like that's mostly for torpedo defense. Mm. Yep. If I were doing those instead, I'd probably remove the sonar target simulators, place that into a giant boy at the back, and then just have two long missiles. And more of them. I just kind of shoot them straight out of the bottom myself. Um, I would have yeah. double-stacked these. Um... Make them two meter long, and then mount them in in series. Basically, I just, just reset the launcher. About? Oh, you know my habit of building missiles that can fire through each other. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was thinking about that. Just removing the sonar target simulator is because multiple smaller ones are never going to be as effective as a single large one, which can just power through. I think I think the well, well warheads the strength on the um, intercept warhead doesn't uh, get changed by the length of the missile though, does it? It does by the amount of modules. Oh, 
Okay, I wasn't aware of that one. Um, but yeah, I think the reason they've got the simulators here is hopefully to distract the incoming torpedo into going after the interceptor and make it easy to no, intercept. No, that makes total sense. I think that's the idea behind how these have been set up. I'm just getting a good glance at these uh, Seawas guns for and after the ship. Uh, it seems like they're meant to be kinetic. Yeah, uh, they are pure kinetic. Using the heavy head. Mm, heavy AP. Actually getting a decent rate of fire, like 536 RPM out of these at 100 millimeter. That's pretty decent. Yeah, and if we uh, check the shell, the individual shells are doing like one and a half thousand kinetic at 22 AP. So, yeah, th these guys are um, meant to be a k pure kinetic kill weapon system, uh -huh. rather than um, an explosive version like, like my jackhammers. Uh -huh. Though, uh, maybe you might want to adjust your mic there, bud. Yeah, I am sorry. Though, I just had um, a call and had to do something. All right. Okay. The centerline turrets are flak based, so there is your flak, anyways. Uh, they're anti aircraft guns. Yeah, uh, pretty much all the stuff in the middle of the ship is like anti aircraft. He doesn't really have the completely secondary guns from what it looks like. And all the uh, anti surface damage seems to be being handled by the uh, mains here. Um, I just checked, would and I be, the would I be right in that assessment. The flat guns aren't configured to it for anti-missile duties at all. They don't have the controllers for it. Mm -hmm. Which is interesting. That's some oh. wonderful work here with all the rigging. I don't think I'd ever really see myself doing that because, well, I, I kind like of finicky. myself. Kind of oh, finicky yeah, to do it. Nightmare. You could see me doing that on the Kyushu, and that it took a I while. I hear it's quite maddening, yes. It, it's actually a lot easier now than it was before. Yeah. If you use decorations, yeah. Yeah, just, just just get de decorations. You and, can copy um, and paste a lot easier now. Well, yeah, especially with uh, being that, able to apply the mirror. If you were doing something like this, it would be a lot easier now. And I'll note why it's because these are perpendicular to each other. Up top. Uh, Ian, were you about to say something there? Me and Matey were both trying to speak. <laughs> Pretty common thing. I'm not even sure what I was going uh, to say. Um, oh yeah, that's what I was going to say. Um, uh, the the comparison that I was going to draw was, um, is the jackhammer is like half the internal mechanism compared to these kinetic weapons because yes. the kinetic just flat out needs a bigger mechanism to operate effectively. But the ship was built with that in mind, so yeah. Yeah. Uh, it looks like he... Mm, I would be kind of nervous about the... Uh of the CUS guns taking a hash run because you drop a hash at the base of this thing and that whole damn turret's probably going to go up. It doesn't look like he's got any spa liner in there or anything. Heat might also be very, very nasty as well. And did you guys notice the uh, Azzy pods Ac on the back of this? Actually, the, um, oh, yeah. the CUS guns have armoring on the turret themselves. Like really? the internal, the internal mechanism has got a shroud of metal around it. Okay, so the the turret is actually armored inside the turret. Well, is what you're trying to say here? Yeah, that that's why. Um, okay. If you're moving through it with the uh, placement marker, it shows as empty. Right. Okay. But yeah, it's, it's actually got a layer of its own armor behind. It's kind of hard to tell there. when you strip the blocks away. Yeah, you can't tell at, at all. Like, I, I had to. Yeah. Armoring turrets like that is actually very good practice in FTD. Yeah, uh, a lot of people It'll don't save bother you a lot with of headaches. I have to say, I dig a lot of the d detail work on this ship, though. It does yeah. it does very definitely seem to have been made with a lot of love for the design. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's definitely that. Yeah. Uh, 
I really like some of the stuff that he did here with the uh, with the lamb system. It looks like uh, he was doing very, very good to try to integrate it into the actual ship itself. Yeah, rather than have uh, the nodes just stand out wherever they've mm -hmm. been put in. Which is the normal way of doing it, I think. That said, though, the uh, laser coverage is only around the superstructure area. It mm -hmm. uh, ignores the bow and stern, mm -hmm. as far as I can see. And he is using a centralized lambs as well. Um, again, that's a preference thing for me. I like to kind of scatter my land systems throughout the ship for redundancy. I know it makes things a little more expensive, but I prefer the redundancy. Uh, do you think we've uh, about touched on everything then? Um, take a look at the armor. Yeah, let's have a look at the armor real quick. Fair point, that. Uh, I don't think we really talked about that much here. Oh yeah, this is a fun scheme, although I do have something to say about it because it still suffers from the hex vulnerability despite the mm, tile to counter it. Yeah. Some, it's the same thing I've mentioned. It's gonna be cash resistant, though. I mean, he's got like one, two, three, four, five layers of armor, like four metal, one alloy, and then he's got the wood spall liner on the inside, and then the oblique. Uh, that'll be pretty hash resistant. I I'll think. just throw up what the layering is, and yeah, that's a slightly different way of doing a spall liner those metal beams so it looks like he also went with the uh, pole strategy here too as well at least uh, from what it looks like around the turrets to try to mitigate that uh, hessian heat damage incoming a really thick outer layer of metal backed up by what was that heavy behind that yeah yep then a layer of wood then an air gap provided by the addition of a pleeks two layers of alloy and another applique and then it's core systems behind that uh, if you have a look at the very bottom he's got like a bunch of uh, airtight compartments with helium pumps yeah just trying to get uh, extra buoyancy wherever he can squeeze it in it looks like mm -hmm. which is usually a pretty good thing to do because if you build ships where they rely on PID stabilization to stay afloat um, Doing a little bit of min-maxing like that would might save you uh, materials in the long run because the engines would have to work a little less harder to keep it afloat. Am I making sense? Yeah, you are. Um, yeah. It, it's about uh, how easy it is to keep the thing afloat and how much energy you have to spend doing it. Mm -hmm. uh, this thing, if it wasn't for the vertical stabilization, it looks like it, it would sink fairly readily. So it does need the assistance it can get. Mm -hmm. Which, that's honestly a pretty common thing with a lot of the more experienced from the depths players that I've noticed is that they don't rely so as much on looking for the center of mass or air pumps or things like that. Like traditionally, we all probably started doing FTD with, and instead, a lot of the people seem to kind of gone the way of just uh, using PID stabilization and call it a day because you can get so much more armor and weapons into the same in volume. Like smaller yeah. space, yes. Yeah. Which I totally get that. There are some <laughs> internal sections scattered throughout which just have pumps in them, actually. So it's not quite as dense as it looks, but it's just like only in the areas where there isn't vital equipment packed in. So it's. Mm -hmm. So I came back with the math, and well, this system, by being so thick, it actually count, is slightly counterproductive. Because. If you average, if you do a weighted average of three times the eight armor class of wood and then the armor class of all the layers before it and once, dividing that by eight, you get to twenty-seven point three seven five armor piercing, which those edge projectiles will have which is quite a bit. Yeah, but then, then it's immediately hitting the oblique panel, which is an armor rating of 50. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's going to do half the damage, but larger bash projectiles can have 
10k plus of frags spawning, which is just going to chew through through most of this. Yeah, which will yeah, so then go to the alloy armor behind it, won't it? Mm. So I go ahead, Dana. Uh, I was gonna say it's close to something I would do, but not exactly. Uh, a lot of heavier ships like this, I'd probably have like maybe one to three layers of metal slash alloy on the outside, then like maybe one layer of uh, heavy underneath that wood spall liner, you know, using uh, slopes on the heavy armor, and then probably either heavy armor slopes or a plate behind that. That's probably how I'd go about doing it. So I yeah. just wanted to note that real quick. In general, unless it's a very small ship where you really don't have the space, you want that sacrificial outer one to three layers, which act as most of the armor. With the... And it's cheaper to replace. Yeah, with the very thick stuff behind it. Doing it like this is good practice, unless you're going to be facing larger ships, which tend to use these hash slash heat rounds, and this thing is not really proof against any, either of those, because, well, the, he the heat jet will practically ignore the half layer of armor, since you're using a square root mm. of the armor class, which means for a half layer, it's going to reduce its pierce by 10. So you may actually stop it fully, but it is with high pen metric, you probably will not. Mm -hmm. So those batteries and such will Lift take me. some of the damage if you're facing high grade weapons. Oh, excuse me, sorry about that. It looks like he's done some pretty good work here trying to reduce uh, EMP uh, damage here. It looks like he's got all the EMP vulnerable stuff wrapped in a uh, stone, which is a very good thing to do. I don't mm -hmm. know if anyone else has noticed this. I did notice it, but uh, there was other discussions going on at the time, so yeah, I didn't yeah, notice it. Here. It looks like he also did the same with the uh, bottom of his turrets here, where he has uh, the spin block and all the uh, local weapon controller and all that stuff is surrounded in stone. So yeah, that's uh, probably a pretty wise thing to do there. Uh, EMP's gonna kind of struggle a bit to do significant damage to this. Oh yeah. Except if you turn off all the propellers, of course. This is true, but you have to get them all. So do we want to drop her in the water and see how she does against another ship? We do, yes. We need to... That, that's why I was about asking if we think we've touched on anything so far. Yeah, I think we're okay, and thank you for moving the uh, ship to another docking station. Yeah, I, 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 I didn't want it to drop on the fortress when I killed no. the fortress. So. Yeah, that would be bad. Um, I think, honestly, the main thing we're suggesting here is like um, the main guns could do with the Tetris work being re-examined. Because um, they're a bit, a bit uneven. Something I want to just touch on briefly here for yeah. the uh, anti-aircraft guns. I'm wondering if it would be more beneficial to switch some of those over to like kinetic rounds to where they could be more of a dual purpose gun and not necessarily flaunt anti-aircraft. Um, I was going to suggest putting an anti-missile controller in there as well. Um, just at a lower priority than the standard controller. So that way if there's aircraft around they'll work with anti-aircraft, but if there's missiles coming in but no aircraft they will help to defend the ship against missiles. Well, that's a possibility too, yeah. Okay. But um, um, maybe switching a couple of the totes to frag rounds rather than kinetic, because mm -hmm. the mechanisms on them are pretty small, actually. Yeah. Oh, uh, do you guys have any other things of note that you'd like to discuss before we do the combat testing? Need small missiles. Aside from that. <laughs> Love the visuals. Definitely. Yes, it is. Oh, yeah, it look, looks great. It's a gorgeous ship. Good job, Ivan. Mm. May, and maybe revisit the shell design a little bit as well. Matey was um, making a few comments on those earlier, of course. 
Yes, I I remember this. So um, what would? Maybe, oh, go ahead, Mane. Kind, I'm looking at the lambs and the refill in 19 seconds is concerning. Ugh, but, yeah. They do well, have a lot of storage, so it's, it seems to be geared towards short bursts of intense yeah. laser fire rather than sustained. Yeah. It, that usually tends to be the more efficient way to go because you usually just kind of get things in waves. It seems like that, but I'd opt for an A second reload, maybe. Well, the thing and is, I noticed with the laser setup is uh, with the way I build them, uh -huh. um, kind of expanded the laser grid. The, sorry, the laser core by um, a meter to either side, and then you could have five lines instead of three in the way I build them, but that's just me, so. Right here at the moment, I'm just trying to see if there is a ship that would be probably in its price range. It seems like a tier would be a best bet for this. Yep, definitely. Okay. I'm just looking at them, and it's going to test its missile defense as well, which is not exactly the best, but... We could test it against the Bulwark later. Uh, if we're going to be testing its offensive punch, Bulwark first, then tier for an outright yeah. fight. Okay. Since we use the Bulwark oh. as our um, armored punching bag. Mm -hmm. I don't think this thing will have trouble with a Marauder, to be honest. Not really. No. I, I think just one of the AA guns alone could probably handle a Marauder. <laughs> I'm looking at all of this and they are close range lambs, which... Yeah, I still have the concern about reload, but... Yeah, short bursts. Could potentially work. Okay, so who wants to grab the bulwark? I'll do it. Okay. Just getting it like a, a kilometer plus away. In the meantime, if yep. you want to look down, it has a proper bridge. Mm -hmm. I need but to learn how to do these pagoda superstructures. Eh. Let's just go pull in on them, usually, so... Not so much. Do we care if the Bulwark is shooting at it? Uh, I think you spun in a Kingstead. Sorry, yeah, the Kingstead. Yeah. That's mm. fine. I mean, this is the standard testing unit, usually. Yeah, it was able to take out the whole uh, barrage from a Kingstead, so... You yeah. that for the lamp system there. Yeah, it just seems to be a giant punch with the lambs. Uh, are, are the anti-aircraft guns firing at the Kingstead as well? They are, yes. Okay, so they are doing purpose guns. Yeah. Anti-surface and anti-air. I still think... The volley brings down the total energy by a, down by a third though, which means that... If this thing had a decent follow-up, like small missiles, to train this and then the camps, <laughs> oh boy. I still think you may benefit a bit more from using, uh, like, high-speed kinetic rounds, like maybe Sabo uh, Solid for the anti-aircraft guns, just so they have a bit more oomph against uh, surface-based targets. But... Maybe, maybe some casemates? Uh, casemates, I think he's... He actually probably could work some casemates in here if he really wanted to. But. I, th I think mainly he could benefit from having a few extra weapon systems loaded into this thing. Like, maybe casemates, maybe some small missiles, maybe like a deckmaster torpedo launchers at the prow and stern. You know. Uh, one thing I'm actually kind of surprised about myself is he doesn't really have like any of the simple weapon anti-aircraft guns on any of this. And I just, I just so used to seeing them nowadays that it just kind of caught me off guard that this doesn't have them. Same here. It's kind of interesting seeing a ship that doesn't require just to use those actually. And oddly enough, the length of this thing almost makes me think more battle cruiser than battleship. I would also like to note that um, since this design has been waiting for a while, maybe a look at the vertical stabilization is in order. I mean, it's sitting pretty low in the water. That might be... On purpose, yes, done. I know, but um, I figured to mention it anyway, because most of the hull is under the water, which is slowing the craft down. 
Uh, what kind of speed are we getting out of it right now? 20? That's not too bad for something this size, actually. That's pretty decent. It's kind of low considering it's got four steam propellers. So actually, I think we missed this earlier, but um, the ones driven by the crank, the crank most at the back, are actually on spin blocks to turn to help the uh, craft steering. Yeah, we briefly talked about the azimuth pods, I think. No, we didn't actually. I thought I brought it up. No, you just um, mentioned that they use crack motors when I thought it, it wasn't any. Oh, okay. I think the Kingstead might be uh, outmatched a little bit. Just a tad. Though that said, it is actually taking a while to but go down. It... Yeah. It is getting good luck with the other. Well, it looks impressive because it, it's lots of explosions and things, but you got to remember the flat guns are not actually doing very much damage here. Mm -hmm. So this craft uh, seems something else I, I noticed when I was looking at the turrets, it seemed like about every one of them, but the uh, anti from the uh, the AMS system, it um, they all had ejectors on them. Yeah. Yeah, so a lot of survivability into this. Which I think it's counterproductive for just gunpowder only. I'd rather have a more powerful shell and just eat the extra cost of a direct feeder into loaders, not di direct feeder into guns, of course. Just to reduce the explosion because you're not uh, holding as much ammo yeah. all at once. Yeah. Not not only that. The fuses reduce your, reduce your AP, <laughs> since they don't have any innate modifiers. So using that would probably be slightly better. Yeah, back in the day it used to be the other way around, as I recall. Gotta say though, the uh, broadside he's got coming off of this is pretty impressive looking. Looks impressive, but I feel like it's not actually doing that much damage, especially considering the Marauders got fair medium armor Minking. by... by <laughs> the target dummy. Yeah. The punching bag has got like um, medium to heavy-ish armor by current standards, in terms of its layering at the very least. And even the main guns seem to be struggling to really knock through it too well. Mm, it appears that's mostly the AP a lot of the actual standard channels, the hollow point, is doing very well. 30k damage a pop or 17k. Although how long are the shells though? Six meters. Okay. Lots of gunpowder in there though. Mm. Yeah, I have pretty much used the base in one of my experimental turrets, and it's one of the better setups. So, shell crafting definitely decent, but there is a couple of tricks that could be done. I think my general assessment is just going to say, needs more DACA. Always needs more DACA. Yes, needs more DACA. can never have enough DACA. Hmm. But, uh, DACA's like Beers and booze. I mean, <laughs> never have enough of those either. True. I'm be a proper orc war boss in this thing. Definitely needs more DACA. Yeah, I'm, I'm feeling slightly underwhelmed by how it's performing you know, on the offense. I think it could also benefit from a torpedo launcher, but I like to put a torpedo launcher in about every surface craft that I make. So. Yeah. Well, yeah. Th the thing is, though, that this thing was obviously built like as an APS purist kind of thing. At least mm -hmm. that's the impression I got. Mm -hmm. But even so, more guns, always good. Mm -hmm. I think you should so, just kill, kill the king's head and give it a tier to fight. Yeah, I agree. All right, let's bring in a tier. Remember to spawn at a distance. Yeah, it's at two kilometers. Okay. Right, let's see how it does against the similar price target as suggested. be interesting because the lambs can help here but it's going to be kind of iffy due to the constant barrage 
not so much. Well, it depends on the, how heavy the actual missiles are. What are it they? does seem like it might be losing just a little bit of power there towards the end of that missile barrage. A little bit, but and now it's in reloads. Remember, yeah. if you look at the first turn... Yeah, but the anti-torpedoes uh, anti are also in the water. Uh, so we have to see how they do when it gets out of range of the laser on the tier. Oh yeah, they kill one. Them. Yeah, they're strong enough to kill them. Yeah, there's enough of them. There's another but barrage of missiles. The lambs seem to be already struggling, which... Yeah, the lambs can do with better recharge, it seems. Yeah, yeah, yeah the, the lambs need better recharge to handle a, a volley that size. Uh, did the lamb system the other did it have a regulator on it? Uh, I don't think so. Oh, the, it's taken some hits. That's actually been extremely useful for me. Yeah, it seems like it's burning through a lot of its energy in the initial burst. Yeah, it, it's burning through a lot of the energy, and one of the things about that is that those small Gatling guns in the tier, it seems to be targeting those with its lamps, so a limiter for that may be quite useful. Which then hampers it against all of the other stuff. And now that the guns are flying, you can see it doing way better. So the lamps can definitely be overwhelmed. Mm, the the uh, the pure kinetic Seawiz guns don't seem to be doing too much against the missiles. Actually, I think they just weren't really hitting them very much. Kinda of surprised he hasn't like uh, slapped the super cavitation base on the sea which just loose. I don't think it, he did, but I think that could make it useful against torpedoes as well. Seems to be out here. There. Well, they had elevation barrels, so I think they're just geared for missile intercept. Yeah. Against well, torpedoes, they just don't have the depression. One thing to note here is that none of the torpedoes are completely ignoring the. Sonar target simulators, so there is a little bit of a feature that you could squeeze out of the interceptors. Well, I think I that's wonder... I think that's due to the size difference because they are medium simulators and it's large missiles coming in. Well, it's more likely with the signal processors you don't have enough, even though it can be anywhere between four and forty percent. That ship is just so massive that they are not worth it. Mm. I kind of want to pitch something here. Um, do you think it could be beneficial to use HE warheads on the torpedo interceptors instead of the simulators? Just to give it a little bit more oomph on it to... That could be worth it, yeah. 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 Oh yeah, that could work. I'd say either that or go with more interceptors. But it does look like the simulators aren't really contributing much. Mm -hmm. And. To be honest, I would rather have a pair of jackhammers than those kinetic Sea Whiz guns in this. Just because of the volume efficiency? Or? Uh, because they're flat out more reliable at taking out um, small to medium missiles. Okay. I'm, w I'm wondering if those kinetic ones are actually they're geared to deal with bigger missiles, because that is where they would well be more effective. I believe that these are dual purpose. Stop me if I'm wrong here. Not sure. I'll have to check. Uh, but please continue. Yeah, it looks like he's got uh, a local weapon controller and an anti missile controller. So, yes, this is a dual purpose system. Yeah, but it seems to be the So, it's obvious why it does so well against Saints and Stargates. Another reason why you probably went with the kinetic is because uh, just to reduce uh, the uh, damage should and ammo blowout happen if the turret gets detonated. You think that could be a possibility? I'm a little unsure about the. Um... I think he uses ejectors, so not much. No, so, so, something I've noticed. Yes, yeah, but the the 
um, COA's guns is, are the ones that I'm talking about here. Yeah. Uh, they they can't have the uh, ammo ejectors because they're belt fed. Hmm. Belt fed doesn't work on. No, uh, yeah. You know, or I'm sorry, ammo ejectors don't work on belt fed. Uh, I thought they were just regular loaders because I've been experimenting with those series and mm -hmm. kind of conflated the two. But it does seem like it is lacking like a really heavy block damage weapon. Yeah, so, same thing I, I was saying against the uh, King's Den. Ah, see, I, I can't get the name right. Um, I would also like to note that I don't think the Sea Wizards have actually been engaging the tier. So they maybe look like they're set up for dual I purpose, but they don't seem to be working. Well, dual hmm. purpose as far as being a set up to fire on uh, missiles and aircraft. Yeah, but they're not they're not, not, not attacking the tier when there's no missiles for them to target. Mm -hmm. yeah. But would you really want it doing that because then um, you the local weapon controller is constantly reloading. Yeah, but the local so... weapon controller is set up that way. Um, this thing has a very small margin of stability, though. Yeah, she is rolling pretty heavily right now, and I think it's no. because her... She's facing AP weapons. She's probably going to just flip over right now. Yeah, it doesn't look like the... Oh, no, they're still turning. I was looking at the uh, down props. Yeah, but this is one thing I don't like to do in my build. It's got... Well, it's, it's, it's got um, rooms on both sides of the ship, instead of a centerline one, which means that, yes, technically you have more bulkheads and it's safer, but, the, but this can happen. I, I prefer to, I first use three. Bulkheads. I first use three rooms, like um, a central one and then two small ones to either side. That way if the side yeah. ones get hit it's not too bad of a thing, but uh, honestly, for how much redundancy and survivability was built in as, as she actually goes over now, she's on her side, uh, there's not much redundancy in the stabilization propellers, it seems. Yeah. yeah it, um, it needs more. I like that one trick that you use with the um, the rudders could potentially help in this case. That that Just would work on any boat, yeah. That would and, work on any boat. But she is pretty much completely capsized now and kind of at the tier's mercy, which in um, all fairness, yeah. the tier is almost capsized itself. I'm showing off all and the weaponry. Honestly, if you manage to tie it properly, they do have. If you take a look at the back turret, there is not much visible damage to them, and both of them are out. Completely. It's almost like they kind of fought each other to a standstill here. Yeah, yeah. that is a little bit of an issue with the, with the turrets though, because they need more armor. Mm -hmm. Three and a half blocks is simply not enough in most cases. Mm -hmm. Although, what I'll note is that, well, Ter doesn't have any weapons to really fight back because those torpedo interceptors can kill. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm, look, I'm looking at it. Um, I'm looking at the Brighton. Sorry, not the Brighton, the tier. And basically, the side that was facing the Brighton has been shredded off. So, Brighton could really do with some kind of heavier hitting cannon uh, for yeah. more damage to, to knock through. But, um, tier did have a knockout punch, but the Brighton had the anti missile torpedoes, which stopped it. Mm hmm. I don't know if this would be much of a benefit here, but maybe running like a couple of beams of lead down the keel here might help a little bit more with the roll stabilization. No, the craft is too heavy for a few beams You're to make much difference. Right. Um, what I'll quickly note here is something I'd say. If, if the ship actually had 80,000 rail use. These guns would have a nasty punch. Like this, they simply do not have enough, I feel like. Mm -hmm. take, as if you take a, a look at the the thump AP is only 28. Mm -hmm. And the damage is not stellar either. If I increase it to, say, 60,000, 
yeah, these shells go to 41 thump AP and the connected damage goes up by half, basically. So, I'm just kind of looking at the... Oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. I, I thought you were done talking. That's one thing I would actually fix up about the ship. Just increasing the rail draw because with rail guns you basically have to go big or go home. Not really. Small rail guns can work, you just have to get the AP up, but if you want something that's going to be your main weapon, you have to go big or go home, really. Not really. Um, I've managed to get good results out of um, big railgun systems that don't draw much power. It depends yeah, on how you're trying to configure them. You're relying on the shells and these are... Yeah, they, these are like... Um, these things have a lot of gunpowder, so they do need a lot of rail draw to significantly boost the power on the shells. So I guess these are like uh, high-powered rail assisted. Yeah, these are just the sniper rails. Mm. Yeah, so oh. it's like not 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 solid to what I would build, but uh, we can see what what he was trying for at the very least. I do kind of like what he did with the next of these uh, anti-aircraft guns. I might have to borrow that. Yeah, some of that detail work he's where they're slightly these uh, elevated like that. Yeah, looks mm. good. Another part I'd probably take a look at is, well, you see how you have these two turbines, mm -hmm. and it, well, four turbines, and it's interconnected. It's just two rooms and a single boiler, which is kind of problematic, since, well, one could chill and you start losing pressure. One chill panning that section. So, in my opinion, the best thing to do would keep them completely vertically separated and just use half the boilers. Actually, I suggest just installing some valves in there. That would help, yeah. Yeah, valves would cut off if there was a leak. He definitely has room to put them here. and uh, Yeah, you, you, know. you, you can just replace some of the existing pipes with valves and that will stop any pressure losses through uh, holes being yeah. locked in. But if the engine room gets damaged, I'm looking at it, you also lose most of the actual ammo intakes. Uh, there's ammo reserves and power supplies scattered all along the, most of the length of the ship, honestly. Yeah, but so. the shells, the actual shells, there's four of them in that small section. Oh yeah. So hmm. Yeah, those need to be moved. Those should be yeah, he could probably like get, put those in like either where the AI is or maybe. I'd say under in the under the AI's got the uh, under the laser. Sword in. Under the laser is probably the safest place. Hmm. I just make a whole compartment of its very own. To be honest, that could that could work too. Hmm. Just because these are more important than even your ammunition like, access, because they govern well whether your ammo would actually work or not. Um, so, go ahead. I'm sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead, Ian. Uh, I was going to say, sorry to interrupt, but we're at the point where I must ask, Dama, how are you doing for time? Oh, thank you for asking. i uh, got about maybe half an hour. Yeah, so this is about the time we want to be trying to yeah. wrap up. But uh, overall, I think the consensus that I'm getting from all three of us is that it is a very well armored ship, but probably could stand to have some heavier armaments. Pretty much. More armaments and more redundancy in the stability systems is the main flaws that I'm seeing in it. Maybe would you concur with that assessment? Yep. And okay. I'll add that the APS needs a little bit of improvement. Well, that, that counts in, like, more firepower, I think. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, but just switching out the, the gun completely, because in if you take a look at the desync, you could probably, with what I'm looking at, you could get another uh, one round per minute from all of these quite uh, easily. That, that's why I prefer to make double or quad barrel APS turrets, because treble introduces a few issues most of the time. 
I like, like I said box. earlier, they can be hard to balance. A little bit. But they're fun to make. And if they work properly, they can usually be a good middle ground between twins and quads. Ah, uh, that's the rub though, isn't it? If they work properly. Hmm. Yep. If. Alright, so I guess we're good with wrapping up things here? Yep, I think we are. Alright. Uh, would you like to close us out, Ion, or would you like me to do it? No, you go ahead. You opened this thing, you close it. Okay. So, I'd like to thank you guys for watching. This has been Demoduggy 2 with Ion Mark 3, Lil Kari, and uh, Matey. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. You guys have yourselves a hell of a day, and keep your hammer high. Later. Light up.